So, hola. <laughs> I'm Gogo Hasegawa. Thank you very much for coming. I'm so happy to be here in El Croquis. Um, I, I, I grew up with uh, El Croquis, honestly. Um, for me, the Sejima is an uh, idol when I was a student. And uh, yeah, my first magazine I bought when I, I was a student was uh, a Grokis of uh, Sejima. Maybe the second uh, Sana issue. And uh, I recognized Hisao Suzuki photographer. Uh, I was surprised the Japanese photographer is sh sh was shooting for a long time. <laughs> is it okay? Yeah. Okay. Um, so I'm so happy to uh, to publish the monograph from uh, Eric Rocky, thank you very much, uh, Fernando, Richards. Um, the process of the monograph was so impressive because uh, they, uh, the chief in editor, came to the old building and, uh, and they ordered the Hisao, the photographer, the very precisely, not this, but that. They are so fighting <laughs> on, the, on the building. It's really uh, dense. It's just one week in Tokyo or in Japan with all together. But uh, it was really impressive one week for me. And I understand how El Kroki um, uh, uh, well, have ever think with architect and how they are struggling to, to publish their monograph in their own way. It's totally different from another publication in, uh, in the world now, no? The, I, mean, I have an office and uh, every day the, the, photo, uh, the publisher sends me an email and send me the image and the drawing, all of the things. And uh, one month later, the publication is alive. That's it. There's no communication, no discussion, no fighting at all. It's and the Fernanda and the Richard is totally opposite in this phenomena and nowadays. And uh, that's why this is a um, this um, Ekroki is still very outstanding, I would say. Thank you again. Um, <laughs> so. Um, <laughs> so I, I, I will talk about my projects and the title is a new critical space. But actually this is a title of the article in my monograph wrote by Yoshiharu Tsukamoto. He would be the, uh, the guest in uh, Porto Academy in this year. And he is a co-founder of Atari Bauau, the professor in uh, Tokyo Tech and also actually my professor uh, in uh, Tokyo Tech. And uh, he wrote, uh, well, you, you, you should read it later. But uh, for me, the, this uh, new critical space sounds something, uh, mm, it might be the core of my practice. So I would talk about it in the beginning. Actually, in the, yeah, we, we have actual space. Actual space is uh, yeah, like this, a ceiling and the, the, this, this space, uh, real space. Uh, basically, human make for human, right? But uh, I think, uh, yeah, in the practice, we I always imagine another kind of space, and uh, today I call it uh, critical space. Uh, we think we discuss about the society uh, when we discuss and talk about society. Always, it's about the human society, society of human. But uh, I believe. The building has own um, society, I would say. Yeah, that's why we can talk about the building beyond the uh, difference of culture, beyond the difference of country, like today, right? We share a sort of uh, knowledge and interest of the building. It's, uh, yeah, it's also about the human, but uh, at the same time, we share the uh, knowledge and the wisdom and history of the building in, uh, with all together. And I like this very much. That's why I'm doing architecture. So I, I, all the time we, we 
deal with these two kinds of society at the same time. So it's, it's complicated. That's why I, in, a, in a practice when I design, I try to um, divide at first and somehow um, I'm trying to make a sort of uh, making a new echo between those two space, between uh, uh, actual space and uh, critical space. I would talk about it in, uh, um, through the, my project. At first, I would show the two weekend hours project. This is my first project when I did the 27 years old. Uh, after my, I worked in Tyra Nishida's office, uh, I just started this project. It's in a weekend house in the forest. Uh, it's very, uh, as always, my, the first project of a young architect is a super uh, low budget project, very tiny building, very simple. The plan is very simple, which has uh, seven rooms. But the characteristic of this uh, building is uh, every room has the roof shape. You know, the, this is the kitchen has a roof shape. A living room has also a roof shape. Why? Because uh, between the roof and uh, this small roof, you can find this uh, uh, in between space. Usually we call it the attic space. Um, but uh, I would say in this project, I just designed this uh, attic space above the ceiling. For example, because I put the skylight on the top, the guy, he, he is standing on the kitchen and actually he is the north side. And this is the south side, he is a, a river besides. But the, he can go, he can look up directly to the sky through this uh, attic space. So this attic space would work for the very deep window. Or this living space has a semi-transparent ceiling. So through this uh, attic space, he can get the sunlight, natural sunlight um, all the time like this. I put, I finished the maple floor, maple, uh, maple wall and also this uh, ceiling is made with uh, uh, sliced bed thing maple on the aquarium. So that's why this, uh, this is a natural material but uh, it's uh, translucent, <coughs> transparent like this. So at uh, 10, 11 a.m. it looks like um, burning. It's super bright on the, on the north side of the ceiling. And in the kitchen, if you stand on here, you can look up to the sky directly beyond the living room. <laughs> you are in a tiny space. It's just like eight square meters or something. Super compact, functional. But um, yeah, as if you feel you are um, standing on the forest independently in, instead of just a part of the building. This is what I wanted to make. And also, the, thanks to this big roof above, as if you feel that you expand your body sense through this huge roof above to the um, environment like this. And uh, uh, on, there's a stairway on the roof, the roof of the room, and uh, you can come up to the balcony above the roof. This is my first project. And the second one is, uh, yeah, it's uh, an, an, uh, the same area in the Karuizawa. The three hours by car from Tokyo, weekend house area. But uh, this area is more, it's famous as a uh, uh, humidity in a rainy season in June, July. So every weekend house has a sort of a pilot, this we call it a takayuka. It's a one, one, one meter high or 1.5 meters high. And they, they use it for the uh, space for machine or space for the, uh, sometimes the car or something like that. Um, but uh, somehow I, tr I wanted to use, okay, let's start from this pilotis because they share in this area. So pilotis is a common language in this weekend house area. Okay, let's start with the pilotis, but somehow in a new way. And what I did is to make a very high pilotis in the forest. 
It is uh, 6.5 meters high from the ground. So it's almost like a uh, uh, three floor, third floor in a normal building. Um, this is uh, made by the steel on the ground floor. It's a steel structure with the 10 centimeter uh, column and the three centimeter diameter brace, right? So it's a very uh, simple uh, steel structure. And upper floor, it's yeah, very uh, conventional, the low-cost uh, timber structure in Japan. And uh, this height, uh, 6.5 meters, is really, really important in this project. And uh, on the contrary, the, on the upper floor, and the bottom part, it's, uh, it's almost like uh, 1.8 meters high. It's, uh, so for me, it's, it's like something like this. So it, it's a strong contrast between the ground floor and upper floor. But this floor, uh, this uh, upper floor, living room, it's a um, it's very intimate space, like an uh, attic room. But uh, it, thanks to the, a lot of opening to four direction, and they, they can have a sort of special experience uh, towards uh, nature. It's a uh, in a forest, it's floating, and uh, this proportion, uh, uh, 6.5 meters, it's, uh, I checked, I developed my project all the time with models, and I checked the 6 meter and also 7 meter, but uh, it's um, kind of, if it's a uh, 6 meter, it starts to and define this space too much. So this is very architectural space. And the check the seven meters high, I felt uh, that this space start to melt in the forest. So this uh, 6.5 meters high is a kind of in between proportion between architecture and the nature. And actually when I visited uh, two years ago, and I stand on the priorities, and I noticed when I stand, I can feel the ceiling this uh, timber, timber ceiling. But when I sit on this bench, suddenly the sense of existence of uh, the ceiling disappear. So in just uh, this uh, uh, six meters, six centimeters, 60 centimeters height difference would give a um, big difference of the experience of the building and the nature. So this proportion is, uh, and uh, actually this height or length or thickness or proportion is really important in every of my project. Uh, steel structure and the concrete floor. So as if it looked like, it looked like uh, this is outside space, but uh, for me, this is a, a room in a forest. So the f concrete floor and timber ceiling and uh, wall is made by the existing trees. When you wake up, uh, look up, the, you, can, you can feel um, this uh, natural sunlight from above. So you can come up just beside the tree. Um, this is a scale of the purity space. Yeah, in the upper floor, as I told you, the, it's really intimate space, it's very low compared to the uh, purity space, but uh, thanks to this huge window, it's, um, it's very intimate, but at the same time, it's opposite feeling. It's totally open to the nature. I like this uh, sense. It's, we are really protected by the, the scale of the space, but at the same time, really open to the outside. It's nice to have this uh, totally different uh, feeling in one space. And I put the uh, uh, dining table over the grass top and the grass floor underneath. So you can check the, your kids playing on the filthy space. I remember Fernando and uh, Richard are fighting uh, here. Which uh, angle should be the best? On the <laughs> and uh, yeah, I, I'd say something. As I, as I mentioned, all the height and depth and the length 
this kind of size is really important. And uh, in every project, I start from the, as I show you, let's think about the attic space or roof, or let's start from the purity space. So it's really conventional element, I start, but I, I change the sense, uh, the, 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 the proportion and the scale of uh, such a conventional element and find a new experience. This is uh, what I'm doing in every project. Uh, so size is really important. And also, the gravity is, uh, of course, it's really important for architecture because architecture is something to go do against to the gravity because we need to lift up the roof, for example. This is a, a kind of against to the gravity. So somehow, we need to deal with the gravity in a good way. Um, architect is not a magician, so I cannot, uh, we cannot erase the gravity itself, but uh, I believe we can control the sense of gravity. Look, this uh, uh, proportion of the beam. This proportion of the beam, it's uh, uh, 38 millimeters thickness. It's really important in order to connect to the scale of the, uh, these leaves and the branch and so on. Imagine if you make this with a concrete like uh, Le Corbusier, it's too much, no? It's too heavy in such a beautiful environment. So somehow, in order to make uh, a good relation to the surroundings, uh, the, this uh, gravity, the sense of gravity is really, really important. So gravity is uh, the second topic in, uh, in my architecture. And the third one is uh, a time. Time, time has a, a various sense, like uh, morning, uh, um, day, and noon, and this kind of, or the season. And also, the architecture has a various type of time, like uh, history of the element, like purities. I don't know when and how they start, the human being starts the purity. I don't know who started it. But uh, it's nice that we share this uh, common language of the building, and I feel the richness of the, this kind of time of architecture. And somehow I try to combine this, uh, yeah, so, so let's say the purity is a, let's say, old um, element in architecture, if, because it has a history already. But uh, if we can find something new image of the space we, by the purity like this, it's a um, kind of combination of the oldness and the newness, right? I like this very much. So. I don't, I don't like to do just a new building. It looks very new. It's boring for me. Somehow, architecture has a kind of sense of oldness or history. But on the other hand, it's very boring just to the conservative and the, just the repetition of, the, of what we know, right? So somehow, it, it's really important to carry on the oldness and the newness in, in one space. This is also important. So that's why I, I told I wrote the time of the space. It's, um, it means something like that. So size, gravity, and time, it's, it's um, three topic in my old project. And the second, I will show the two apartment building in Tokyo. It's a rental apartment. Uh, one is Nerima. And uh, what I did is the client is a super unique person. <laughs> Uh, he asked me to make uh, various type of apartment, and also it should be the different from others, because already he knows uh, the neighbors. A lot of apartment already exist, and uh, it's not popular anymore because it's uh, very banal and normal. And the young people noticed this kind of a normal apartment. I don't want to live anymore. So he tried to make. That's why he asked me to design. <laughs> I think. And also, um, this area has its um, kind of a special area close to the Shinjuku, the center of the business in Tokyo. And also, um, the area, this area, there's a lot of university. So he expected that some residents can be the young businessman and also some student as well. So it's not natural to just provide the same apartment, right? So he preferred to have various apartment which can um, invite the various type of people. And uh, 
okay, it's nice for architect, no? Let's make something different from others and let's make a variation. It sounds nice. Eh? But uh, in uh, one week, I got bored with this. Uh, yeah, I started with the Tetris, uh, or something complicated game of the space. But I, I, feel, I, I start to feel sad because uh, as, I showed, as I saw, I always, uh, I did uh, many private house, which as a client. There's a client. So I know who he is and what he likes and what he need. I can talk with the resident who will live in this space. But uh, in, uh, the difficulty of a rental apartment is I cannot talk with the resident, right? So it might be it's a bit boring to, th to think uh, ah, this uh, space, this uh, strange shaped space, this kind of people would live. This is like a, um, yeah, like a masturbation, no? Uh, architect sets uh, a kind of character of the uh, residents and uh, make a space in a complicated way. I, I wanted to make it simple and natural, right? So I give up to make just a variation of the space. Instead of the, um, instead of the room, I can load. <laughs> Great. Uh, uh, okay. I, 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 ah, okay. So this is a normal apartment in Tokyo. Uh, north side, it's a common corridor. And the uh, entrance, here's a kitchen. And a super small bathroom. And a very small room. <laughs> Yeah, Tokyo is a very, very uh, high density area, so it's a um, normal apartment, which has sometimes 15 square meters or something. It's super small. Uh, 2.5 meter by, I don't know, the 8 meter or 6 meter or something. And all the time in the south side, uh, they put the balcony because uh, there's a regulation, and this uh, division wall can be broken when something uh, happened, like a fire or something. So it can work for the escape route. So actually, the, and also, they need to put the machine for air conditioner, machine for hot water. So instead of, yeah, rather than the space or balcony for the residents, it's um, space for the architecture planning or something. <laughs> it's not for the space for the life of people anymore. And the sadly, the, the problem of this kind of balcony is, uh, yeah, they don't, they don't go out anymore. And sometimes they put the, bar the garbage or something because it's not good. And uh, the problem is, yeah, in the end, uh, this kind of dead balcony would make a facade of Tokyo. So, when you walk around the, uh, the Tokyo, you can find a lot of facade with uh, garbage, right? This is very sad. And this is made by architect. So I, I somehow I tried to change this idea of the dead balcony. And somehow I wanted to recover the uh, apartment for the life of people. OK, so I propose to the client, instead of to make just a variation of the shape and uh, the interior of the apartment. Let's make a variation by the terrace. So not just uh, such a small balcony. OK, let's make a tall balcony, or a long balcony, or an L-shaped balcony. This is my strategy. And it's a concrete building, which has uh, seven stories. Uh, there's uh, mainly four kinds of uh, uh, type of the terrace. Um, this is an L-shaped terrace type. So when you open the door, there's no room. It's a terrace. It's not inside yet. And uh, here, this is a common corridor. So this is a fast door. And you have to open the, again this uh, door. And this is finally your room. So this space is a kind of buffer zone between the inside and the outside, like this. So you don't have to put uh, any curtain on, the, uh, on, on this window because uh, there is a sort of sense of distance thanks to this balcony. This is L-shaped balcony. 
like this, between inside and outside. And uh, uh, next one is a tall terrace type. Instead of, uh, yeah, it's, it's not big, actually it's uh, six square meters or something, but it has uh, sometime, this one has uh, eight meters high, like this. So it's a, it's a super compact apartment, which has a 10, 10, 10 square meter. So in total, 30 square meter. But uh, thanks to this uh, very tall terrace, the, he, he can have a various type of connection to the environment. Okay, this is a section of this apartment. It's a kitchen and the bathroom and the bedroom. So when you wake up in the morning from this bedroom, you can look down to the street like this, through the very tall terrace, right? So instead of uh, to make a variation of the shape of the space, thanks to this various type of proportion of the terrace, you can find uh, a various way of connecting to the outside. You can look up to the sky, you can look down to the street, this kind of dynamic experience to the environment is um, in, uh, exists in uh, each apartment. Also, what I thought in this uh, uh, project is uh, anonymity of the apartment. Look, this is a tall terrace type because I explained right now. So you can recognize it. But uh, he or she, he, she cannot understand uh, this, this, this would be the terrace, but uh, this belong to this or um, this or nobody can understand. But uh, they don't put any curtain or filter, this uh, uh, terrace. It's totally open, actually, right? But uh, yeah, he still can have a sort of anonymity uh, thanks to this uh, uh, facade. Uh, second uh, apartment building is really high density area in uh, Tokyo, in Okachimachi. It's really like this. Look, this is Tokyo. A uh, lot of uh, 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 10, 10, 8 uh, stories building is gathered in one space. And the uh, uh, interesting thing of Tokyo is a lot of European friend come to Tokyo and I walk with him and uh, everybody are so fascinated with the gap between the space. We need to make a setback from the uh, uh, boundary line. This is totally different from Europe. You always share the wall in the, towards the neighbors. But basically we need to make a, a 50 centimeter setback from the boundary line and he as well. So in total, all the time, more or less one meter gap um, exists between the building. And uh, I like this very much because uh, somehow we use it for the space, for the pipe and the massing and uh, he is crazy. He, he used this gap for the entrance. <laughs> I think it's not allowed. Huh? But uh, the nice thing of this gap is, um, yeah, there is a honest life. Towards the facade, sometimes they make it fashionable, they make up in a good way, but in the side, it's more unconscious of the building, and I like it very much. Um, so there's a, yeah, maybe it's not beautiful compared with the facade, but the, the nice thing of they don't, they don't, um, they are not so nervous to the neighbors because they share somehow, there's a sort of a community unconscious community in the uh, gap between the building. And I like this uh, sense. And also I like uh, sometimes when we wake up, uh, the, uh, look up to the sky, the dramatic uh, light, like Tadao Ando, is uh, <laughs> we, can, we, can, we can find sometime. Uh, we developed the project with models basically, so hundreds of models in uh, every project we make every day. And uh, this is not uh, the final <laughs> idea or final form, but uh, in uh, every proce process, this is uh, the mo important model in this project and uh, totally different from the final design. But the uh, nice thing of the uh, model, the 
uh, developing with model is uh, model is uh, uh, object which can be um, objective to the project, right? I'm I'm now I can I, I can explain like this in a, in a logic with logic, but in a process I'm totally in the project. And this is uh, this is not good. Yesterday it was good, but today it's not totally bad. It, something like this. So I I'm always uh, struggling by myself with the staff, and the staff also he they they are fighting with um, our consciousness. But uh, with developing the, uh, the model like this, uh, in the beginning, maybe we are conscious about ourselves. So this is, uh, yeah, our, our, our intention is like this. Our aim, our challenge is this. We are really conscious about uh, the each idea, right? But uh, yeah, when we continue, maybe we run one month or two months, it's super hard every, day, every project. <laughs> But, but in some time, spontaneously, the strange model uh, is coming. And uh, I like this feeling. Finally, the, the model overcome architect, right? Of course, uh, yeah, it's a kind of half conscious and half unconscious. But sometimes, yeah, I like to, uh, to reach to the Something we have never thought, or some, something we have never seen. So, on, for this purpose, it's really important to struggle with models. Model is really dry, and uh, it's totally different from my stuff. <laughs> stuff is always thinking with me, so it's totally in. It's sometimes difficult to be objective to the project, but the model is really dry, and uh, it's keep to be the object itself. So I like uh, this uh, characteristic of the models. It's a, uh, yeah, it's also the partner in the project. And what I did is very simple in the end. Uh, this is uh, the first uh, schematic. Uh, if we do it in a normal way, uh, the maximum volume, maximum height is uh, 26 meters high. Okay, and uh, it would be um, eight, story is building. But uh, somehow, I, I, I collaborate with a uh, um, structural engineer and a mechanical engineer. And uh, from the basic design, we discuss a lot. And somehow, we found a way to reduce the thickness of the beams and the pipe, the layout of the pipe. And somehow, we can compact the height of the, each floor. And with the same height, six. 26 meters, but it has a 10 story instead of eight stories. Okay, but the, the problem is this is too much as a floor. <laughs> it's go over the maximum floor in the regulation. So, okay, let's make a void horizontally and vertically, right? So it's, it looks like a sponge instead of a volume. Actually, it does, uh, the, it, this is a tower, I would say, that uh, it has a, co uh, the courtyard in the middle. This is an um, apartment in Okachimachi. I like this picture very much because uh, this uh, shop, vegetable shop, which is uh, one, two, three, four stories. But as I look this height, the same height, but my building has one, two, three, four, five. <laughs> four and five. It's the same height. I think this is architecture. <coughs> so yeah, but uh, I don't deny this building and so on, but somehow I co somehow communicate and compare with uh, a standard dimension in a city. And uh, the point is, this is uh, what I did is, this is the second floor. What I did is not to make a division wall between the apartment. Each floor has a two apartment all the time. But the two apartment, it has a gap between, between the apartment as we have towards the neighbors. So the gap between the building, the neighbors, I showed, uh, this is a Tadawando 
spot. And uh, this gap is coming in and uh, in between the apartment, here is a terrace and go through outside. So it's, uh, it looks like uh, two independent, independent building instead of uh, apartment. And here, this uh, central part is a uh, courtyard. And uh, this dot line is a uh, uh, skylight. So from here, he can look up to the sky. From the second floor of the 10th story building, you can look up to the sky. <laughs> That's crazy. OK, so this is the third floor here. This is the north part. Here is the south. So basically, the north part is a negative space, which is very dark. Basically, so actually the, fame, the uh, real estate company puts the price in each apartment. The north part is cheaper than south part, for example. Or upper floor is more expensive than lower floor because it's more, it can get more sunlight. But from here, him, when he drinks the coffee, he can look to the south through the courtyard and his terrace and the street in the south side. So, and this is a skylight of the underneath him. So something like this, uh, thanks to this uh, void, the vertical void and the horizontal void, they can have a lot of connection to the surroundings. This is what I struggled in this project. And this kind of connection would change the conventional way of understanding of the price of the apartment because he can look to the south from the north edge. Okay, so each space, each floor has a totally different shape, uh, but all the time uh, every apartment has a skylight and a connection to the surroundings, like this, like this, like this, like this, like this. So this is the top floor. Uh, but you can find uh, various skylight in uh, courtyard. And this is a section, it looks very complicated, but from the second floor, he can look up to the sky somehow. And uh, the guy, this is the west side, uh, he, now he drinks the wine here, because he can look to the fire, fireworks in the uh, east side. Right? So this kind of horizontal and vertical void would provide a, a kind of rich communication to the surroundings. This is the entrance hall. You can recognize, this is outside, semi-outside, let's say. Uh, but you can find the various shape and various kinds of uh, apartment is coming out to this uh, uh, courtyard space. And this is from the Second floor. Uh, this is from uh, fourth, fifth floor. As uh, uh, I explained, from the third floor, he can look to the south. Or from the second floor, he can look up to the sky. This is from the, yeah, this is the third floor. It doesn't look in the north edge. It's really bright. And uh, the, thanks to the reflection of the, the sunlight, it's provides the natural sunlight in the deepest spot of this building. And uh, this type, which has a skylight on the entrance hall. Yeah, this is a neighbor's uh, wall, let's say. But it looks like a gap between the building. This is an um, yeah, apartment in Okachimachi. And, uh, but basically, yeah, what I made a lot most in this 30 years is a house, private house, small private house. And uh, European people, European active friend ask me, do you have any typology in Japan? They don't believe <laughs> Japanese architects have it. <laughs> but uh, unfortunately, we have. And I would say the two stories, timber structure, 
roof shape building is uh, uh, typology in Japan. After the World War, uh, because of the lack of uh, housing, house, uh, we, we made uh, a large amount of uh, two stories building in Tokyo or surround of Tokyo. And uh, uh, because of uh, we, we have not, not so many space, not many plot, uh, it's very different from Escorial, I think. <laughs> Um, we cannot uh, we cannot build the one story one one story building, but uh, but even now I believe we can improve the uh, this uh, typology timber roof shape two story house. Actually, I did maybe five buildings in this um, topic, but I will show you two building. One is a house in Komazawa. It's a timber structure, timber building, which has two stories. It's in the uh, center of Tokyo, but it's a really nice area, which has uh, some uh, green spot. And uh, it's a house for two, uh, uh, three, three, three persons, the young parents and one daughter. And what I did is uh, to make a living space, but uh, instead, rather than living space, it's more, almost like a public space. So I, I made this uh, floor of the living room with stone, like a piazza or something like that. And uh, I put the huge window to the east because there's a plum garden in front, fortunately. And the second floor, this is a point. Um, as you noticed already, I developed my project with a section instead of the plan. Uh, section is really important to check the, the proportion and also the detail, beam, blah, blah, blah. So, and the section, sectional drawing is uh, kind of the most important um, device, <laughs> uh, media for me. And what I did is mainly two things. One thing is to make a very high living room, which is uh, four meters high. It's really high as a Japanese house. <laughs> And uh, so that's why, and, but this house, this roof shape is really defined by the regulation from the uh, street and from the nose. So actually this roof shape is totally, completely the same to the neighbors. Okay, so we, if we decide to make a very high living room, the upper floor would be the, almost like an attic space. This point is 1.2 meters. It's really like really intimate space. Okay, and the second thing I did in the section is to make a very transparent floor, right? So instead of to make just a beam and floor, I put, I arranged the small dimension. It was a 38 millimeter by 50, uh, 56 millimeter. It's something like this. This timber is used for the um, furniture or a small wall instead of structure. But uh, in collaboration with the structural engineer, somehow I did. Also, I keep the gap between the beam. So this is, uh, it is beam, but at the same time floor and also ceiling. Because um, thanks to this height, the very high, a living room looks like almost like a semi outside the space because uh, uh, this skylight and this uh, transparent floor uh, provide the sunlight to the ground floor. So I hope, I, I wished to make a kind, to make, to cancel the hierarchy of a normal house or the uh, ground floor is a bit dark and the upper floor is a bit uh, too far from the ground. Yeah, living room can look up to the sky and from this study room, he can look up, look down to the street. So thanks to this uh, floor, um, it's totally, it is totally changed the conventional two stories house. And I check the gap between the beam <laughs> with the leg of the, daughter of the client, and, I, and they decided to make a three centimeter as a gap. And also, they requested me to make a wood house, 
meaning the, yeah, finishing uh, by the wood as many as possible. But if we put the normal wood, it looks like a um, Japanese uh, restaurant or something like that. <laughs> so I made a big research from in all over the world, and uh, find, I finally I found out that this uh, wood, this is a eucalypt from the Australia. Do you know the tree of koala, right? <coughs> um, eucalypt is really dense, heavy, and strong. And actually, it's, uh, every uh, layer of the train, they use this uh, eucalypt under the layer of the train. So it's, it means super hard and strong. And it, almost it looks like a brick, no? It doesn't look like a, a wood anymore. And I like it very much. This is a picture taken by Iwan Ban. Maybe it's a half year later the completion. And the last year, Hisao Suzuki took, it's like this. It's uh, totally silver or gray. It, um, it's half, half part, it looks like a wood, but uh, yeah, it might be the stone or something. It's really strong presence. And you can find this uh, beam. Yeah, I... Yeah, the height of the window is also important. It is 1.65 met, uh, meters above from the floor. It's uh, a kind of a tension the guy cannot see inside. And he can see the, this plum garden in front. So we, we change, we check the height of the window in a construction site in the end. It finished the stone floor, which has a big opening to the plum garden in front. And this is a beam. We put the only three steel beam at first and just arranged uh, the very tiny small beams with gap between the, each other. And from the above, you can look down to the ground floor. So you have to take care of the iPhone or something. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you can recognize this uh, diamond shape. It's a uh, print on the street. So when passenger or car passing in front, she can feel a sort of atmosphere of the public, place, uh, public uh, space. So this is also, this is really intimate, like attic space, very private function. But at the same time, it's totally open to the outside. It's a hard place. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> I like uh, this uh, cover very much. <laughs> Beautiful. Fernando was uh, sitting in this uh, bench and he was so excited. <laughs> Go, this would be a cover. <laughs> And the second one is I show is a new project. It's a Yoshinoshida house. It's uh, in, uh, built in a Nara near Kyoto. It's a really beautiful rural area, uh, which is the most famous uh, uh, town of, of the forestry. So in the, and they have a tradition of uh, 500 years of the forestry. They have a mountain and they have a skill to maintain the tree. So Yoshino Sida is the most uh, rich brand of the wood, which has a super high quality. And uh, it's really nice. And uh, in collaboration with Airbnb, I designed a kind of a new type of uh, guest house, of the mix of the guest house and the community space, besides the river. And this is also commissioned from the Yoshino town. And they provide me the really important uh, site in, of them. It's beside the river. And actually, this, this, site, this site was a really important checking point of the wood. Long before, they cut the tree on the mountain, and they brought the, these wood, Yoshino Tsida, through the uh, river, with the river, like this. They make a sort of a ship with uh, the timber, 
and uh, they wrote uh, on the on the river, right? And they pick up here and check the number and the amount of the cedar and brought it to the uh, factory in the town. So this is a really important spot for them. And uh, Yoshino, Yoshino is a very beautiful uh, place, so that's why I checked the typology in uh, Yoshino. And uh, they have a very cute and unique typology of the roof. They call it uh, Yamato Mune, Yamato Roof, which is uh, uh, composed by the two kinds, two different angle of roof. They use uh, the a bit pit roof and uh, narrow roof together. So some of the public building also has this uh, Yamato roof type, and uh, I think it's interesting. So let's make a contemporary Yamato roof. This is uh, one of the tasks I found. And uh, I did it to make a, a community space on the ground floor. And this triangle space in the uh, upper floor is a simple guest room, which you can stay through the Airbnb. Actually, you can, if you have a chance to visit uh, Kyoto and Nara, you can stay this uh, Yoshino Shida house. Please check the Airbnb. And uh, actually, this uh, building is uh, uh, for the exhibition of the new kind of new type of house named uh, exhibition named House Vision. It's done by with uh, uh, Kengo Kuma, Atari Bawa, and So Fujimoto, and me, and some others. And I collaborate with uh, Airbnb. And that's why I, we need to build in Tokyo at first. And, uh, um, after that, I decided to move this uh, transport, this building, to the Yoshino. That's why the, the dimension of each unit is really important, less, less number of trucks. So in the end, uh, we, we can somehow arrange the size of the unit and, uh, with uh, uh, five trucks of the 10 ton, right? So each dimension of the space is defined by this uh, size of the truck. It's a really long uh, community space, which is a, I call, we call it cafe, which has a long table with a very beautiful Yoshino Sida, um, some functional shower room and toilet and so on. And the north side uh, to, towards the river, it's Engawa, mm -hmm. it's a deck. So I expect the local people um, take a rest here because it's in front of the promenade of this uh, town. And upper floor is really simple. It has two bedrooms the, for the guest. Like this, very simple. And this is the exhibition. Uh, this is Bow Wow. Uh, this is Jun Igarashi and uh, So Fujimoto a little bit. And uh, this is uh, made with uh, two different angles of the roof only made by Yoshino Cedar. Somehow I try to use uh, uh, different kinds of Yoshino Cedar and uh, exterior wall and uh, also roof. Window as well, window detail. This is a different pitch of the roof. And uh, yeah, we place in uh, Yoshino finally. It exists in uh, just beside the promenade. So every morning, uh, the local people, local uh, old mother is working for the house, and they take a rest like this, like this. So it's uh, this kind of a community, um, yeah, it functions as a community space like this. And uh, the ground floor is made with uh, Yoshino Shida and uh, uh, this long table, which has a six, six, uh, 4.5 meters length. And um, upper floor is uh, not uh, cedar, but eucalypts, uh, not eucalypts, uh, cypress, just you know, cypress. So it's a slightly different uh, texture. And uh, this floor is coming down, this uh, cypress. So this, floor, uh, this uh, stairway is belong to the upper floor, so it's uh, uh, coming down, it's hung from above. So this is a detail between uh, Yoshino Sida and Yoshino Cypress. So this is a kind of boundary of the community and the guest. 
It's a um, guest room above. This space is very popular for the kids. <laughs> it uh, exists in uh, Promenade and the Yoshino River. A lot of beautiful traditional house in the Yoshino, in front. I like this uh, he, he saw the picture very much. He wake up in the morning. <laughs> okay, I will show more two projects, which is a uh, project in Europe. This is just finished in uh, last year in uh, Italy. Gastara is a uh, the very very small city near Padova, Reggio uh, Emilia around there. Very, very beautiful Renaissance city. And uh, I was asked to design the new kinds of uh, chapel for the ceremony because uh, uh, they, a lot of people in Italy, maybe perhaps also in uh, Spain, uh, they prefer to make a ceremony. Uh, they prefer to burn the body. And uh, they make a sort of ceremony of scat scatter the ashes. Do you have this? Yeah. Now it's, uh, it costs a lot, you, they need the space, so they stop, not stopped, but they, almost the people choose this uh, uh, burning uh, way instead of uh, body and make a uh, uh, grave, yeah. So, but they, they, have, uh, all, they have very traditional chapel, so they asked me to make a sort of space to make this uh, new kinds of uh, ceremony in Italy. So in Italy, uh, many, many cemetery has uh, this kind of new chapel now. And uh, there is a sponsor. He is a production company of the marble based in Vicenza. And uh, so that's why they, they, ask, they pro provide us uh, uh, material. It's so exciting for Japanese architects to design the building by marble. Can you imagine? <laughs> and uh, this is a, I am so impressed of the scale of the stone. It is a three meter, two meter, two meter. It's really huge. And uh, yeah, this is a picture of the, his uh, factory. And the sense of gravity is totally different from uh, Tokyo or, no, or in Japan. It's really heavy, and I, I was so fascinated with this. So I decided to make a stone space instead of a yeah, normal space, really stone space. And uh, I think he wanted to make. OK, let's make uh, something really stone space in this chapel, because he's a sponsor. And uh, also, I, what I, this is a picture of what I like in, uh, in Europe. In, uh, especially in a uh, castle or uh, sometime in uh, uh, um, chapel, we can find this kind of uh, window. I call it the three set besides the window. <laughs> window, bench, and the niche. We found it in, uh, it's in uh, all the various space, various uh, building in uh, Europe, I think. And I like uh, this uh, intimate intimacy and also openness to the outside. Okay, this is, it, it could be one of the reference of this building. And uh, this is also, we can find the, in the facade of the chapel, not only Italy, but uh, uh, they call it, uh, I, for, I forgot. Uh, it's a, yeah, niche. But uh, they have a statue in the, on the, in the middle. Uh, this, uh, this is uh, nice. Also, they have it in uh, this uh, cemetery. So this might be also one of the references in this project. And what I made, what I did is super simple. Okay, let's make a stone building only with digging. Only one dig, let's make a space, let's say. So each, this is, uh, consists of uh, 12 pieces of marble which is a 38 centimeter. But what I did is just to dig in one time. But of course, super precisely. And the thinnest part, so this is a 38 meter thickness. 
but uh, this thinnest part is only one centimeter. So it gives uh, sunlight. It would work as a window because it's uh, semi-transparent. And uh, this part has a height of the 50 centimeter. It would work as a bench because uh, the, uh, uh, the city asked me to make a bench because uh, basically uh, this kind of a ceremony is um, the, a lot of uh, old people participate and uh, they need a bench during the, or before the ceremony. Uh, it's necessary to put the bench. Okay, of course. So may I provide uh, the 12 bench inside the, this uh, chapel. And this is enough for our, for our body to come in. I, for me, this is a room. <laughs> so this is, a, this is a niche, bench, and window. Three set of besides a window. This is a, a facade from outside and from inside. And you can find the proportion of the window, meaning the thinnest part is changing for each, because uh, the proportion of the bench is slightly different each other. So they can choose the most uh, fit, to the <laughs> nice to your hip. So this is a section. So it, it's really massive, but uh, in this section, super thin in this part, in the middle part. And I was so surprised. Uh, I, Honestly, under, I underestimate the Italian constructor, <laughs> but uh, their technique of, the, of the, the stone is really impressive. They are so precise, so professional. They have a history, I would say. Maybe we have a tradition of the timber construction, but uh, they, they are so beautiful skill in the stone. I like it very much. And uh, yeah, they dig with machine. I explained one hand, but it's not true. It, uh, <laughs> it takes 24 hours for one hole, honestly. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it, it, it took a lot long time to get the permission. I cannot understand why, why they need such a long time. But uh, we need uh, maybe half a year for the permission. In Japan, we can get the permission in uh, five days. Or, one week. <laughs> I cannot understand. But actually, they just. Uh, man, it's, I should not say so much. But in a way, yeah, finally we can get the permission in the last year. And uh, yeah, we, they bring the uh, 12 marble pieces to the uh, courtyard. And uh, yeah, we, we waited almost uh, seven months or something, and uh, they built it in one day. Because uh, it's just put on the ground. <laughs> and they just <coughs> arranged, of course, we prepared the, a sort of a foundation in advance, and they just arranged, but very carefully, of course. This is the detail of the joint. Uh, you can find the transparency of the stone. And this is the final piece. This is the entrance uh, gate. <laughs> Done. <laughs> and finished. This is a super simple building, very tiny um, chapel. But uh, as you know, this is a kind of reaction to the proportion of the arch of the existing um, cemetery. So this is in the middle of the courtyard. So in the morning, this part is super bright. And uh, in the afternoon, this part can be a window. So of course, uh, every moment, uh, the appearance of this uh, chapel is changing. Because uh, most of the time, it's, there's no cemetery, so somehow, I hope, I imagine it should be something uh, beautiful object in the cemetery. Also, it should work as a restroom for the visitor. So this is a public building. If you have a chance to, to come close to the Gostara, please have a visit. 
super precise. <laughs> Impressive. <coughs> yeah. She was so exciting to this. <laughs> but she, yeah, but she, she can speak only Italian, so I couldn't understand. <laughs> now this is the final project, the project in Spain, uh, near Cretas. The, we supposed to build it uh, in this year, hopefully. And this is, uh, as you know more, of course, uh, this is uh, uh, Algas River, and uh, actually this is a boundary between Aragon and uh, Catalan. And uh, yeah, maybe you know the Soro House. It's uh, already uh, built by the Pesobon, Alien Housing, and the uh, Office Casting Gears, and David Van Severen. They finished two houses already. And the uh, client uh, asked me to choose a site because it's a very huge site. And uh, I noticed this unique river. Also, historically, this uh, Catalan Aragon is, uh, yeah, it's an, uh, there's a long history, right? So this, uh, it has a sort of a um, story in this place. It's a kind of cultural place. Uh, uh, so this uh, space might be interesting. So I, ha I visited there. And actually, it has a very big, Cliff, which has uh, 25 meters difference. And here is the uh, uh, Algas River. It's a cliff and the beautiful uh, tree of the olives, super flat. So they come, we come, we came here by car, and, and it's just an olive tree. And uh, suddenly there's a cliff and the uh, Algas River. And uh, we, as you notice, there's a very unique uh, shape of the cliff, right? <coughs> so this is a river and uh, uh, 25 meters height. Okay, let's build here, even if it would be very difficult to build. <laughs> because uh, there's a very beautiful view from the Aragon to the Catalan. Okay, and uh, I knew some reference uh, which is built in on the cliff. This is Nage Iredo in Japan. It's one of the famous uh, uh, shrine in a rural area in Japan. It's just uh, put on the uh, surface of the cliff. And this uh, monastery in Greece is also something like this. Okay, instead of uh, built on the ground, ground it exists just beside you. This is a concept. So ground is not below, but side, on your side. This would be something special experience. And uh, this is a concept image. So this is, here is a level of the uh, olive forest, olive tree forest. And they, end, they access here and go down, it's the space. And underneath, I just put the aquarel on the cliff, so it would work for the uh, swimming pool. Um, yeah, so because of the regulation, we need to put the solar panel. So I just put the solar panel on the ground. They can put the car here and this, uh, very direct concrete object, diagonal object, is uh, inserted on the ground. And you can find the hole here. Here is an entrance. And underneath there is a door. But uh, maybe you can recognize it as the entrance of the house. This is the entrance, uh, the solar panel here. And what I did is this, uh, this thin line, this is an existing uh, line of the topography. And what I did is to put the three lines, three straight line, like this. And this is a floor, edge of the floor, like this, like this, like this. So this is a, this is an entrance from above. It's, it would work for the living, dining, kitchen. They, they have to go out, let's say, tell us and come in this uh, bedroom. Or 
turn right to the guest room with the big terrace. And underneath of the living room, there's a private uh, swimming pool. So you can dive from the stairway directly. <laughs> this is a section. I, I'm pleased with this uh, section. You can find the horizontality of the architectural element and very organic uh, line of the nature topography of the cliff. This uh, vertical uh, the, uh, diagonal element is a solar panel. You can enter here. This is the living room and the swimming pool and uh, a bedroom, which is divided in, uh, by the topography. And uh, this is a section. Uh, the structure, it's uh, f uh, firstly, we're supposed to build this uh, big structure, almost like an infrastructure, infrastructure by the concrete. And this thin steel floor is hung from this uh, uh, concrete roof. And it's also supported with this uh, column of the stairway case. You can dive to the swimming pool from this step. Uh, rendering with the living room. You can dive to the swimming pool. Uh, this is a model. You can find the living room and the bedroom like this. It's separated by this uh, terrace part. Uh, entrance and the guest room and the terrace of the guest room. Uh, I, we made a big uh, model recently. And when we open the roof, it's like this. So this is a structure of the living room. It's hung from above. This is a floor, terrace, and the living uh, uh, bedroom. So yeah, very wild surface of the cliff coming in and out, which divides the two spaces. Maybe this, this is a final image of this project. He died. <laughs> uh, the terrace and the, in the opposite side of the terrace, it's a um, bedroom. Yeah. I'm uh, looking forward to build in this project. The first house in Europe. So uh, this is the final slide. I showed you the eight projects. And uh, as I explained, the size, gravity, and the time is uh, the always topic in, the, in my project. And somehow, I wish to um, give such a new size, gravity, and the time of space would give a new echo, new interrelation between uh, human and uh, building. That's why, as you see, it looks like uh, there's no common, uh, no, always uh, it looks very different each other. It, it doesn't look like uh, from one architect, no? Because I'm really interested in to struggle with the yeah, various uh, material, various uh, gravity, because uh, every time client and uh, Site is different, and every time client and the place is unique. So instead of just to make my style as an architect, I prefer to keep struggling to make a new echo between uh, human and building. That's it. Gracias. <laughs>